Hi and welcome, I'm Andreas. Today I'm going to build this drill storage and charging station with some of the basic features that you expect like storing my drills in individual slots, having the chargers with hidden cables, having the batteries up here and I also came up with some 3D printed solution to some specific problems that I had. So if you want to join me in this build, come on in. Now I've got all the pieces except for the back panels. Um, this is a project that I'm building completely from leftover plywood um, from other projects and I really like to use Cutlist Optimizer um, to find the best orientation for the panels and so on. This is not sponsored, it's a website that you can use for free in, within certain limits um, and I really like to use it to lay out my panels um, in an easy way and see if everything fits and how it best fits together. Um, this is not the charging station that is sort of the, the, the ideal world charging station. It has to go up on that wall and the space there is limited. Um, so it's sort of a compromise from what I need and what space I have. Um, but then probably many projects are that way. So I'm trying to get the most out of it um, while also sticking to the requirements that the place where it goes to um, sets for me. So everything's cut. Now I'm going to mark and cut the biscuits and sand everything and then we'll see if we can already glue up. I just realized I made a mistake. I read the wrong measurement from my plans that I drew and made the side panels not high enough by 32 millimeters. Um, it's not a big deal. The middle compartment will not be as high, but it should work, I hope. Um, so I have to sand off some of the markings, make new ones and think everything through before I continue. It's too tight. Um, those 3.2 centimeters, 32 millimeters, they are, they would be really needed to get the, the batteries in and out of the charges. So um, I have some more leftover plywood. It's a different thickness, but since it's for the sides, it doesn't matter that much. So um, I think I'm going to cut some new pieces for the sides. Um, to get the original size that I planned.
So I've cut all the biscuit slots and um, sanded everything and now before I do a dry assembly I'm going to chamfer all the edges. Okay, seems to be good. I can glue it up. So, while the main body is in the clamps and drying, um, I can focus on the bottom panel which will hold the drills. So you might have wondered why this is still empty and why I didn't glue it up with the rest. That's because I want to go for maximum flexibility um, in the future because I don't know if I've all, I'm always going to have these kinds of drills. So I want to have this bottom panel removable. This is it, I have prepared it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw it in here with four screws without any glue so that I can take it out in the future if that's necessary. And to be even more flexible I was thinking about what kind of slots to cut in there. This is a test piece and of course you know this kind of method. You drill um, a hole and you cut in with the, with the jigsaw and then you can hang your drills right but in my case with these Bosch drills that I have the problem is that the switch for the direction is in such a position that the drill hangs on this switch no matter how I turn it or how wide I make it um, there is not enough room between the switch and the, the widest part of the body here so that this can go in with a piece of wood so I was thinking how I might solve that. Basically I need something that's thin enough to go in here above the switch but below the widest point of the body. And since I got a 3D printer a couple of days ago, obviously I was thinking maybe I could use that to come up with a solution and I think I did. So this is another test piece um, which I modeled in Fusion and then printed and this is just five millimeters thick and it goes in just like I said the drill can go in and the, the holder will be above the switch but below the widest part and that way that piece can hold the drill and the good thing is of course since this is 3D printed I can easily replace it if I need a new one or I can easily change the dimension print another one for the different drills that I have and this is just going to be screwed to the bottom so I'm going to cut slots in here that are wider and then these pieces will, screw, will be screwed to the bottom for each drill individually so that I have all these qualities that I need and um, obviously I'm also happy to have a good use for my 3D printer which I'm really enjoying using um, and obviously this well this was the whole point why I got it because I really like this process of modeling something, printing it, making a product out of it um, and while I'm, I'm not going to abandon woodworking it's just a nice addition because you can make different kinds of products that often don't work in wood. So this is uh, the next step, marking out these slots and then screwing this in so um, that I 
can slowly finish this piece. The glue has dried overnight and now I'm going to take off the clamps. What I added off camera is a strip of plywood up here which is going to be the main mounting point. So this strip goes to the top panel and so it can carry the whole weight of the cabinet very easily. And then I'm going to cut the back panel and mount that and then it's already time for the last bits and pieces. So the next step is to install this panel that will hold the charges and I glued a piece of plywood on here so that it can sit at an angle and the charges won't fall off. And to make it sit at an angle I cut these wedges, they are going to go in here. And now I was thinking about a mechanism that holds this in place um, so that it doesn't slide off while at the same time allowing me to easily open it up should I need to sort of rearrange things here at the bottom and I thought of um, something that um, could act as a sort of hinge so I'm going to um, screw this piece of dowel at the bottom of the panel and I flattened it a little bit you might not be able to see it but I sanded it flat here on the top so that it can sit at the bottom here and hold in, hold in place and this will sort of sit on here and a little cleat will catch it so that when it moves forward it will catch here but the fact that this is a round dowel will allow me to pay to, to sort of swivel this up to swivel this up so that I can do something here at the back um, that's the idea I don't know how often I'll need that but I just found the idea neat and so that's why I do it okay so let's go ahead So, all the parts are prepared, everything's assembled, now it's time for oiling. Um, as always, I use PNZ um, Hard Wax Oil. Um, I really like this product, it's great, and I like the company, they've been my partner for many years. They're a couple of hundred kilometers from here in the south of Germany, they try to source locally, um, they adhere to very good 
environmental standards and sustainability standards. Um, I think they're a great company with great products. I really like that. I've never mentioned it so explicitly, but you've seen me use it before. Um, I really like this stuff and I think they're worth supporting. So two coats of oil and then I'm really happy and looking forward to putting this thing up on the wall. So the oil has dried so it's time for final assembly. I made a couple of 3D printed parts for the drills so that each slot has exactly the width that the particular drill needs so that it can slide in easily but doesn't hit that switch which it shouldn't ride on. Um, and then I also made some parts um, to cover the big hole for the, for the cable to go out. Um, this will keep the dust out. It's not strictly necessary but you know, I just got this 3D printer and I really like to try out what I can do with it um, and modeling this stuff and then printing it and seeing how it goes. That's just something I enjoy. Um, and another part is going to hold my ear protection, which is also headphones um, and which are going to sit up here for charging. Um, normally I would just put them on the back somewhere but the whole thing is not as large as I would like it to be because the wall space is limited so I made another 3D printed part to go up here to hold that headphones. So let's get going and can't wait to get this thing up on the wall and functional. I really like how this turned out. It's very nice to have my drills here organized and the charges and everything. I've been meaning to build this for a long time and I'm very glad that I finally came around to do it. I hope you enjoyed this build and if you are interested in some tips that I learned from the glue up, there's another video in the corner which I talk in which I talk about this. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye, take care.